Storm clouds are fast gathering over Kenyans. High cost of living, taxation, and joblessness persist amid grand promises by the government. The situation could get worse before it gets better if the masses are to believe the mid-January assessment by Treasury CS Jungona Ndongo. 2023 is not looking good. In this week's episode of The Briefing, we speak to Nderito Murethi, an economist and former governor of Laikipia County. Government is facing a very serious cash crunch. Basically, government has been living beyond its means. So, uh, spending uh, more than they are able to raise in taxes and that they are able to borrow. Secondly, um, previous borrowing is catching up with them. Uh, of course, the, the health of government finances uh, has a lot of impact on the rest of the country. So what you are seeing is the private sector, business confidence is falling, uh, consumer confidence is falling, so people are not hopeful about what is going on economically. Uh, so, uh, and that, that means that they will not be investing and they will not be spending at the same rate as they would otherwise, which uh, dampens the economic prospects. Uh, the behavior of government, of course, to increase interest rates is hurting um, you know, the private sector. Uh, so people, uh, if you need to borrow to in, you know, in, in the cost of business, uh, then you'll find the cost of credit is um, way higher. And that again is dampening uh, investments. It's also dampening consumption. Uh, finally, um, the cost of living is a particularly troublesome question for Kenyans right now um, because, uh, you know, prices are high and they are rising even higher and rising at a faster rate because inflation is now about 9.2. So something that last year was costing, say, 10 shillings, this year is costing 11 shillings. And you see it across whether it's the price of bread, whether it is the price of uh, all foodstuffs, uh, but also things like fuel, electricity, petrol, and so on. Edible oils, you know, how much do you pay uh, for, say, uh, 100 grams or half a kilo of cooking oil? And all these things, their prices are going up and going up quickly. Of course, the frustration of the Kenyan uh, you see, you as citizens, you elect a government um, to avail yourself uh, a way of solving these kinds of problems. Um, so Kenyans are a bit frustrated because uh, their government seems uh, uh, unwilling or perhaps unable. Either way, uh, the citizen is suffering all the same. Well, look, um, uh, the, let me say that uh, politics and economics are two sides of the same coin. Um, remember that the way the economy works is governed by laws that are made in parliament. Uh, and, uh, you know, businesses and private individuals operate within an environment created by the government in power. So what is going on, for instance, in the, in the, as you raise the question of the market, um, the market has little confidence in what the government is saying. And you can discern that from the outcomes. Government borrows every week. So what are the outcomes when government goes every Tuesday to say, we'd like to borrow some money from the market? And what you are seeing is that the market is, is basically uh, shying away from long-term, long-term, frankly, uh, two years and longer. Gov uh, the market is shying away from lending government for more than uh, 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 90 days, 100, 180 days, and one year. 
That's what we call bills. The market uh, uh, is agreeing to lend that, but the market is not agreeing to lend government for two years or three years or five years. Um, last week, just before Easter, when the government went to the market, um, the performance was something like 17%. So they wanted to borrow 20 billion shillings in a 10-year bond. <coughs> but the market only agreed to lend them 3.6 billion at a very high cost of 14.366, uh, so 14.4% uh, interest. So that's the market saying very clearly to government, we don't believe in what you're telling us. Um, now, uh, that outcome was not the first one. So it's a trend. If you look uh, uh, for the last four or five months, all long-term bonds have been undersubscribed so that if the government wants 50 billion, it will get maybe 20. It comes back to the market again wanting 30 billion, it gets 18, like that. So the market is saying clearly, we are not confident in what you as government are saying. If you look at the short term, meaning now 90 day, meaning I lend you money Mr. Government, but you have to repay it back in three months. That's why the market is willing to do that. And even then, at a very high cost. Um, this week, the Treasury bill rate went above 10%. And this is the first time in a really, really long time uh, in living memory when Treasury bill rate has been higher than 10%. Now, what is the role of politics in it? Look, the market uh, in, in Kenyans, you observe your leaders, you, you, list, you look at what government is saying. First of all, what they are saying and what they are writing down, are they the same? Then what they are saying, what they are writing down and what they are doing, is it the same? So for instance, government has said, because there is no money, we are going to live within our means, we are going to reduce government expenditure. But the same government has presented a, a budget instruments that are showing they intend to increase the budget by 500 billion to 3.6 trillion. Now, if already at 3.1 trillion you don't have enough money to finance it, how will you finance it when it is 3.6 trillion? So it's one thing to say, yet the legal instrument you've put on the table, called, for example, the budget policy statement, is showing you intend to spend. Now, government is saying we are reducing expenditure, but you are observing the behavior of, for example, senior government uh, leaders, you know, and every week they are in basically, I would, I would call it reckless expenditure unnecessary, you see, is it necessary for government uh, leadership, for the senior people, to go to every county every other day uh, for prayers and thanksgiving? Well, it's not necessary. Uh, you know, God can hear you from wherever you are. <laughs> you don't have to go <laughs> to every county and go twice per week in order for God to listen to you. You can pray from, from wherever you are. Yeah? You can pray from state house or from parliament or from your home and God will hear you. So what you're seeing is uh, and, uh, people are observing that behavior and seeing that, frankly, uh, you are not walking the talk. You say you are reducing expenditure, but all we observe is you uh, buying new cars, for example. We say you're going to reduce expenditure, but all we see uh, is you employing more and more people. At the same time where you are saying, I'm not able to pay salaries, you are employing other people. And, and all of that you know, erodes confidence. And that erosion of confidence implies very diminished economic activity. government uh, to order 
They said, look, you cannot continue this way. Yeah. Um, a government needs uh, to be a responsible government. Government leaders need to take responsible action. So first and foremost, as, as stakeholders, as Kenyans, uh, as the owners of the country, unlike what some leaders have been saying about shareholders, Kenya belongs to the citizens of Kenya. It doesn't belong to a few people. And what we should do is, is stand up um, and, and say to government, uh, this is not what we expect of you. And if you cannot, um, uh, if you are unwilling or unable, um, then you should probably consider quitting as a matter of fact. Well, you see, I am not convinced that what, uh, what the political leaders, particularly on the government side, I'm not convinced that what they need are policy recommendations. Because to say so is to imply that they don't know what is the problem. I think they very, very well know what is the problem. But they are busy doing other things um, and, and perhaps chasing private interest. Um, and the reason I say so, because if you look at the economic managers, for instance, um, in, in senior government, they are not new to governance and to government. Um, you know, the, you, you, the, the, many of them have been in government <laughs> Uh, for the last 30, 40 years. Yeah. Not, none of the senior people in government is coming to government for the first time. So, for instance, the CS Treasury was central bank governor. Many of the economic advisors were running treasury. Going back to Kibaki time, yeah? if you look at the senior political leaders, um, I mean, the president has been in parliament and in government since 1997. The Prime Cabinet Secretary, even longer, has been in government uh, since the late 80s. So these are not really new uh, you know, or individuals who have no experience in, the, in these matters. In any case, um, the, the, the government is not short of technocrats. So the, the, the issue is about will. Yeah? And I don't know how we can persuade uh, government leaders to behave properly um, you know, w without citizens standing up and saying, look, enough is enough. Um, but to complete, or to, to complete uh, your question, if government was listening, first of all, we would say, the, the same things you have written down in your budget policy or paper, the same things you've written down in your debt management strategy, please do them. Now, what have they said? They will reduce reliance on short-term debt. So do so. Now, what they are doing instead, between, for example, in the last three months, they have borrowed 191 billion additional from the short end of the market. Now, that is not reducing the problem. That is increasing the problem. Um, I would, if government was listening, we would say the following. Reduce interest rates, first of all. Reduce interest rates. Treasury bill, you should aim for something like 1% or 2% interest. Not 10, as it is today. Um... That will enable you to sell new debt at a lower cost and retire the old debt, which is more expensive, so that you can save on the interest charges. The second thing that we, we would tell government is stay within what you, ha you have already committed to doing in the debt management strategy and in the budget statement. So, for instance, you must eliminate all this uh, sort of uh, don't care, uh, you know, wastage 
and, and, and expenditure on things that frankly are completely irrelevant uh, for, for now. So eliminate wasteful expenditure and do so from the top. So you can't have the president, the deputy president and the other senior people doing one thing while they are telling the rest of the civil service, uh, you know, uh, you should not have a cup of tea today and we can't pay you salaries. Yet the same day, a PS or a minister is going to spend 20 million shillings to get on a helicopter yeah, to go and distribute a few bags of relief food. That kind of behavior, you must stop it. We then say to government, the way to manage this escalating cost of living is not by increasing interest rates. Yes, it is one of the ways in which you can do it, but it's not the only way in which you can uh, reduce the cost of living. First and foremost, the underlying reasons for the cost of living, like say high food prices, the only way you will solve that is if there is sufficient food. Okay? Now, if you can't import the food, the only way then you will do that ultimately is if you grow the food. In the meantime, you need to support Kenyans. And that is what this government refused to do. They took away the subsidies, which is what was supporting Kenyans, as we wait for the season to be able to get food. And that's what government should go back to. We would um, say to, uh, uh, to this government that you cannot be growing the budget from 3.1, 3.2 trillion to 3.6 trillion and say at the same time that you are trying to uh, reduce the budget deficit. So reduce the budget deficit by, in fact, uh, reducing uh, government expenditure. Um, and, and we could go on uh, in terms of a variety of other options available to government uh, uh, um, to, to, uh, to manage the circumstance. But I, I, my personal view is that um, you know, the leadership is actually not really interested in managing the circumstance, their eyes are too focused on an imaginary enemy uh, within politics. Uh, their eyes are firmly focused on blaming the previous administration uh, to the exclusion of daily work of fixing the economy.